Hello, my beautiful souls. Um, today I decided that I wanted to take you through what a typical day in my life usually looks like. So the situation that I'm in now isn't typical. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever experienced being bedridden due to a pressure sore, which I've had several times before, but I've always been able to get up and, and round about and using my wheelchair. And for some reason, this time around, things just went really wrong. So this is not how it's going to be forever. Me lying in bed and talking is not how it's going to be. Uh, hopefully, sometime before summer, I'll be back up and active again. And then I'll take you through sort of the, the real day-to-day -day life and making movies about exercise routines and morning and night and all of these things that I would love for you to join me on and I have I think over 80 topics and videos planned so I have a lot of material to go on and I'm really looking forward to it but I'm hoping that I can still give you I guess uh, a look into what it's like and and just explain what a typical day is for me and if you have any questions, then feel free to write them in the comments below. And I would love to do Q&As, so don't be afraid to ask questions, even, even questions that might be difficult or that you're scared might be offensive, because I'm generally quite an open person. <laughs> it takes a lot to offend me. <laughs> um, and um, I, I, I really want to be authentic. And, you know, I'm doing this to be genuine and to to allow people to know what it's like to live a life with a disability and, and how that works. And I don't think that works if I'm just going to be, I guess, scared to talk about things that really matter and, and the things that people really wonder about. So feel free to, to ask questions. And then once I feel like I've gathered enough, then I'll do a Q&A and answer as many as I can. Um, and uh, usually a lot of people wonder what my day-to-day -day life is like and even, I mean as for everyone it changes slightly and very slightly but I like routine and it makes me feel secure and it makes me feel safe and it relaxes me so I enjoy a really strict routine because it allows me to feel like I know what's coming. Uh, my life has, has been <laughs> quite a journey and, and just having something that's uh, all laid out and that I can rely and depend on just feels really nice for me. That doesn't mean that I can't be spontaneous and I, I like to be spontaneous, but I don't, I don't enjoy the surprises too much. <laughs> it has to come from me. Um, so, um, I have, uh, if you see me just looking away from the screen, I have my laptop here next to me and I'm just going to use that to give the best overview that I can. So I like to use a schedule that works in blocks. And uh, when it comes to productivity and planning, that's also something I'm going to be making videos on in the future because I enjoy that kind of content myself and hopefully that will be something that some or a lot of you will enjoy. And I... I feel that it's necessary in our um, in our time and in, in our society because we're so pressured on time and, and we have so many obligations and so so many things depending on us and just feeling like you can master time in a way that makes you feel that you also have time to breathe it can be really helpful and I find that blocks works the best I used to be addicted to hour to hour or half an hour to half an hour just to have everything down to the minute but the issue then becomes when something takes a little longer or there's a delay and that time block goes into the next one and that really stresses me out I'm not sure if that's the same for anyone else but I just like to have bigger blocks where within that time frame I have these and these things that I would like to accomplish and it's fine <clears throat> if I don't get to do everything. But I will do what's, I will prioritize what's most important. And then maybe in the next time block, if I end up 
finishing faster than I thought, then I could maybe take the, the I guess, tasks from the previous block and, and finish them then. So that's uh, what makes it work for me. And um, my first block is usually from 9 to 12. So my assistant will arrive at 9 in the morning. And then the first thing is sort of the morning routine or morning care. Uh, so I either a shower or I sort of get my care in, in the bed and that works, both works fine. And if I want to wash my hair, I can do that both in the shower and in the bed. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen one of the pictures where I'm actually having my hair washed in this sort of bed, I guess you call it a bed tub <laughs> for, for hair washing, which works really, really well. <clears throat> so it all depends on maybe the plants that I have, the time that I have, and how I have to prioritize. And after that morning care where I just make sure that everything is nice and clean, I will move on to getting dressed and then uh, exercise. So that could be physical therapy, which could be um, something called range of motion, which is um, this specific way of stretching and, and bending to sort of keep the muscles and, <clears throat> um, and joints. Uh, flexible and and uh, avoid sort of stiffening up and becoming rigid and and having less mobility and that can also cause a lot of pain and discomfort when when things in your body starts to shorten or, or become tight and then you suddenly have to move that can be really really painful so I try as best as I can to to stay sort of flexible if that's if that's possible uh, and even now that I'm bedridden uh, the the county have graciously given me um, a physical therapist that comes home twice a week and uh, when I'm on my left side I will work on my right arm and right leg and then the next time she comes I'll be on my other side and we'll work on that side because I can't uh, flip from side to side too often and I can't be on my back for too long so that's how we make that work and exercise is really really important when you have a disability or a physical one that's um, as um, comprehensive as mine uh, and even if, if the, the paralysis is from the waist down it's still really important because even though you sit still and don't move things happen within the body so it's important to take care of it even more so I would say than maybe before <laughs> um, and I also have a bed that I can stand in if, if that makes sense so um, once I'm able to get back on my back I can what we do is that we pull pull my body all the way down to the foot of the bed and this is something that I will also show in the future I will I will take you along for all of this and I think that it'll be really fun because it's something that people, you know, the assistants, they, they enjoy doing this with me and I think it'll be nice for other people to see how it works as well. Yeah, and then after we've pulled me down, then we'll use uh, these big straps over my knees and hips and chest sort of to, to lock the joints where, I'm, where I could bend and, and sort of scrunch together or fall forward so that I'm, I'm really secured towards the mattress and I have a mattress that that's dynamic which means that every 15 minutes it relocates the air within chambers so that the pressure is always moving and doesn't stay too long in the same place and that's to avoid making a pressure so worse or adding to new ones uh, and and there's a button that allows you to fill it completely so that it doesn't move around while I'm standing just to make that more safe and once I'm secured, we will push a button that makes the bed tilt upwards and I can get up into a standing position. And that allows me to get pressure on my bones and joints and it helps my, my organs sort of reposition and, and move around a bit so that there's um, something for my body to work with and get used to. And it's really good for digestion, it's really good for blood pressure, for blood circulation, for 
bone density and many, many other things. So I'm really thankful that I have this type of equipment that can do this for me. And a lot of people in situations like mine, they, they have a chair, an electrical wheelchair that, that can come with the ability to raise you up into a standing position. I just find that too painful and uncomfortable. So I prefer to have that uh, done with a bed. And that, that's what works for me. So either it's, uh, I, I will probably do either or because both types of exercise take, takes a long time. So I will choose one or the other. And then maybe in the future, if I have the time, I will do both every day because they are equally important. But when it comes to bone porosity and osteoporosis, I have osteo, I'm not sure if I'm saying correctly, osteopenia, osteo. I think it, that's osteopenia in one hip and osteoporosis in the other. So it's really important for me to try my best to, I don't know if it's possible to improve it, but I guess that I could help to avoid it getting worse. At least that's what I've been told. And after that, I'll move uh, uh, from the bed and uh, over into my wheelchair. And we do that with a uh, floor lift and we put this, um, you know, some of these words are difficult for me to say because I don't know what they are in English, but we have this fabric that we put underneath me and it sort of, it's sort of wrapped around me and it lifts me up so that I'm, that I'm secure in the air and then people can reposition me from the bed and over into the chair so they don't have to lift me because that would be too heavy. Um, I'm quite big, I'm, I'm 5'10" and um 130 pounds so that's that's a bit too much for people to carry around and after i'm in the chair then next is the bathroom and um just in case you're you're wondering you know about toilet and everything that's a really normal question that's completely fine i actually have two stomas so i have a urostomy and a colostomy so i don't use the the toilet in the conventional sense uh, so I have, have bags that they, they clean and change every day. So usually when I'm in my chair, then every, everything is, is, is done up to that point. And what remains then is, you know, brushing my teeth, skin care, hair care. Um, yeah, what, whatever I feel like doing. Uh, and I can do more or less, whatever I feel like, whatever I feel like I need. And, and I think that that's really nice. And I have, you know, I have personal assistance and I have a set amount of hours every week that I can use. And actually for most of the time since the accident, so since 2003 when, when I first got assistance, the most I've ever had is 60 hours a week. And though that might sound like a lot, I, I need help 24 seven. So that's about one third of, of the health that I need. And I've always been really thankful for that because a lot of people get less and a lot of people don't get any at all. And I live in a country where it's actually something you can have. I know that if I lived in another country, I might not even have that type of help. So I'm very aware of that and very mindful of that and appreciative. But lately, <laughs> Uh, lately things changed and something happened and I I don't think of <laughs> I don't think of quite understood I, I don't think I've processed it yet but I have graciously been given 125 hours a week so that means that I will have uh, full aid at night and for for uh, around eight hours a day as well and that means that my husband can finally sleep I don't have to wake him five, six, seven times at night for just the smallest things that I can't do on my own, whether it's regulating temperature or needing a drink of water or having to reposition due to, to pain or needing help due to an anxiety attack or because my body is having a, a spastic attack. I just really can't believe that it's happened. And I'm in the process of uh, looking for people and hiring and, and then training. And I do all these things on my own. And I will talk about that as well one day and 
and take you through how that works. But that's really nice. And that means that I have a lot more time during today to actually have a life. I have more freedom and I can't believe it. And um, I'm looking forward to, to make the most of that and to finally sort of feel freer again. And I can't wait to get back in the chair and, and see what that's like. Uh, and then after my morning routines are done, it's usually breakfast. And um, sometimes I will make ahead breakfasts that are either frozen or made the night before. Because breakfast is something I struggle with, so I just want it to be something I really enjoy and feel like eating and something that's quick. Because breakfast is the meal that I have the least time for. And then after breakfast, so I brush my teeth before breakfast. I know that that's a discussion. Uh, my dentist said that it's best to do it before because you create a protective barrier. And I know that a lot of people prefer to do it after because of you know breath and everything. But what I would do then is just rinse my mouth with water and then chew a mint or something and I feel just fine going out. So after eating, then I will do some chores around the house, whether that is laundry or cleaning. Usually on I have set days for specific things. So maybe a Monday for me would be I make uh, on, on, on the Sunday, I would make a list of the dinners for the next week and then a shopping list. And then on Mondays, I would go through everything and then see if we have some of the things that we need and then just cross out all that's already there. And then I will go shopping for what we need. And I prefer to do that once a week. So uh, I will do these sort of things. And then that's between 9 and 12. And then the next block is 12 to 3. Uh, so 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. or 12 to 15 as we would say here <laughs> and in that time block it's usually appointments or meetings or errands uh, but if there's not a lot of those to do and or I stay at home for most of it then I will maybe work on social media or prepare my lunch so that's a, a block that's really flexible and that sort of varies and depends on what I have going for that day. And I try to not have too much going during a week. I try to have maybe Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays where I have <coughs> things that I have to do or being social and things like this. And I, I try to have uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays as sort of days off where I will still do things with my assistant, but I will be less social and try to relax and rewind and recharge. And Sundays for me is church, which, which is my time during the week. That's when I really gather energy to get me going and to lift my spirits and to just give me the ability to make the most of my week. That's something that's really good for me. And I hope that you have that sort of time during the week for you as well, whatever that is and however that looks. Because it's just really good to, to recharge. So if you've seen one of my other videos, I talk about pouring from a full cup and not an empty one. So just make sure that you fill your own so that you can help others without draining yourself. And then the next block would be from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. or 15 to 18. And during that time, I like to work on creativity, mindfulness, um, meditation, scripture studies. And that's the time where I just try to recharge a bit because that first part of my day can be really draining. There's a lot of moving around and going places and, and being active. And that's sort of a place for me to, to do things that are soothing and calming and relaxing so that I can take a breather and just sort of reset my system so that the rest of the evening, I also have more energy and feel uh, more energetic. So not just having energy, but also feel like I am able to use that in a good way. So after that, the next block would be from 6 p.m. to about a quarter past 10. And during this time is when there's dinner and activities and hobbies and social things. 
so most of the things that I like to do are usually during the evenings, whether that's church or friends or activities or other things are usually set during the evenings for most people because, you know, people have jobs and, and school and, and children and everything. So I'm guessing that's normal for a lot of people that most of the th us, most of those things are during the night. So, so that's how that works for me as well. And dinner is usually something I like to prepare. So maybe on a Monday or a Tuesday, I will try to prepare as many things as I can. I will cut up a lot of different vegetables and fruits and ingredients that are already made and make dressings and dips and sauces and stuff that can last for a while in the fridge. And then I try to plan out the meals in a way that we use everything within the expiration date or for how long it lasts once it's made or cut. So I like planning, <laughs> I'm guessing that's noticeable. So, so I try to make dinner as easy for my husband to prepare as possible, but now having more help during the day as well, I'll, I think that will sort of ease his burden even more and make me feel like I'm contributing even more. And that's really nice. That feels really well. And I, I try to go to bed and get up at the same time. Having been in bed now, that doesn't necessarily work the same way because everything is different and, and my body works differently and we have to be mindful of things and we have to wake up specifically every third hour if we're asleep so that I can switch sides that I'm lying on. So we're getting really tired and, and our cognitive abilities have taken a hint. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to have that time again where we feel like we get enough sleep during the night. But I will try to go to bed and get up at the same time every day because from what I've read and gathered when it comes to struggling with sleeping, it's really important to stick to the same time so that your body gets used to to a routine and will prepare itself for both waking up and going to bed. And if that changes or varies too much or too often, then for me, it, it leaves me with a lot of sleepless nights and, and a lot of tired days. Let me know if, if, if that's something that doesn't work for you as well, you know, that you need, you need strict, a strict schedule when it comes to sleep. And after about a quarter past 10, and then all the way over to, to 9 a.m. again, or 9 in the morning. That's the block where I have the relaxation before going to bed. I have my evening routines, which is the same as in the morning, you know, taking care of my teeth, skincare, and hair. And then I have uh, the, the nighttime care, where we just go over and just check that everything is are okay with the stomas, and that everything else is nice and tidy and clean, and then it's bedtime and you know sleep is elusive at the moment and it's also something I've struggled with my entire life but when I finally do get to sleep it's just really nice to wake up in the morning feeling refreshed and ready for a new day and I also like to plan ahead so so during the evening I like to plan for the next day and go over what will happen and if there's anything that I have to remember or focus on especially. So that's a typical day, but it's it's not how it is every day. So hopefully that will give you an insight into what life is like. And, and I have to be accompanied for all of this. So either it's my assistant or my husband who is also an assistant. So he's actually an educated electrician. That's what he worked as when I met him. And then he uh, quit his job in 2011 and became an assistant so that I would have more freedom. And that's always emotional for me to talk about because he sacrificed a part of his identity so that I could have a life. And I'm incredibly thankful for that. So I've had the ability to be, to, to feel that things are more yeah, that I can depend on it. it. It's more predictable. It's not just, will I get up today? Will I have to be alone today? Will I have to be in bed by myself all day? And I actually can't really be alone. So so that did, didn't work at all. And um, I, enjoy, I enjoy being active and spending my time wisely and on things that give me something and that I feel adds to my life and also that 
where I'm in a position where I can do really nice things for other people as well. So yeah, if you have any questions, then feel free to leave those in the comments and please like and subscribe. And thank you for being here and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.